Hey everybody, super excited. We're gonna spend a little bit of time today talking about platform teams. This is a topic that's been coming up quite a bit as I talk to people is as people are maturing their cloud programs, as they're thinking about how to really do cloud at scale, this idea of platform teams or SRE teams or sort of like cloud teams keeps coming up. So I wanted to share a little bit about like what's our view? How do we think about what's the role of a platform team? What's the problem they're solving for? Uh, and what's the kind of scope of those teams? So taking a quick step back, I think it's helpful to start about how do we think about the evolution of how people adopt cloud? And what we often see is, you know, I'll call it this phase one approach to cloud, where you have multiple application teams and all of them are starting their journey to building cloud applications. So typically an organization starts, you know, they sign a contract, you know, for cloud, maybe they have one or multiple vendors they're working with, and then they sort of let their application developers free, right? So you might have application teams one, two, and three, all of them are building cloud applications, and maybe I have multiple different providers, right? I'm working with, you know, Amazon and Azure and Google, right? So I have multiple different potentials, cloud providers, and in this kind of phase one, it's a very, I'll call it ad hoc or random approach, meaning app team one, they might be all in on Amazon, app team two, you know, they're picking and choosing, app team three, they're building something themselves. And so it's this sort of kind of, again, chaotic approach where each team is picking their own tooling, approaching it their own way, building their own pipelines, you know, building their own process and for how they're adopting cloud. And we see this very, very often, right? And we see it so often that we've called this sort of like phase one or cloud 1.0. And I think the challenge in this model almost inevitably is 12 months, 18 months, 24 months into this, what we end up seeing is everything you'd expect, right? You have cost overruns because you know, every team's kind of doing it their own way. Nobody's paying attention to spinning down dev instances. Things are oversized. You have security vulnerabilities all over the place because the application teams are really focused on their applications, they're not really thinking about some of the day two concerns around, did I actually define my security groups correctly? Did I set the S3 bucket to private only, et cetera? And then you have all sorts of compliance challenges, right? And then the challenge is, okay, as a security and compliance organization, there's no easy way to sort of partner to solve those problems because every team is solving it their own way, right? So you have 100 app teams doing it 100 different ways and you have one security, one compliance team trying to kind of go, herd the cats, if you will. So I think quickly people start to realize like, okay, this is not a super scalable approach to cloud because we haven't really standardized, we haven't really industrialized the process. So this gets you into kind of the phase two, as we often call it, right? Where you still have all the different application teams that are doing their thing, but now we say, okay, great, application team one, application team two, application team three. These should not all have their own unique approach to doing cloud adoption. Instead, we should create a central platform team, right? So different organizations might call this a different thing, right? We call it sort of a platform team. Some people call this the cloud team. It might be the DevOps team, the SRE team, right? I think it comes by different names, cloud center of excellence uh, in some organizations. You know, I think conceptually what's important is that you have this notion that I have many different application teams. They're the customer. I have one platform team. They're sort of the provider internally, if you will. And their job is to standardize the approach to cloud, right? So they will be the central aperture, if you will, to say, okay, this is how we build and deliver an application on any of these cloud environments. So now I have one team that's responsible for defining how do I do a landing zone? How do I build the patterns for these applications? How do I make sure the right security and compliance and cost guardrails are in place? which organizationally is important because now you have an interface for those other teams, right? So if I'm the security team or I'm the compliance team, right, I have a group to go work with and that group is then standardizing across many different application teams how this actually works. So that's great. I think from an organizational design perspective, you can kind of see the difference here in terms of the approach. It's about creating that central group, kind of regardless of what they're called, making them responsible for that and then enabling these customers. But then the question is like, what's the scope of that team? Right? Like what all should they actually deliver, right? And so this then gets into a little bit of a, kind of a philosophy question of like, okay, how much do you want to standardize? How much should be the scope of those teams? And so the way I look at it is from the perspective of an application, what are the critical sort of, I'll call them, non-functional requirements that it has, right? So every single app that you're building, for example, if we start by thinking about sort of the pre-production pipeline, there's a common set of things, right? So every single application, great. 
it's going to need a version control system, right? So you might say GitHub is my you know, VCS of choice. Well, then every single one of my applications, I'm going to want some sort of a CI system, right? I'm doing continuous integration and testing, and you know, that's where I'm doing my app build, for example. OK, great. So do I want to have 10 different solutions, or do I standardize on, say, Circle CI or Jenkins? Then you think about things like artifact management. Right? So great, I'm going to build my Java application, or I'm going to build my Docker container. Do I have 20 different registries? Or is there a consistent artifactory deployment, for example? And then you get into things like you know, static code analysis. Right? And this goes back to things like security and compliance. I might say all my apps have to go through a certain amount of static code analysis you know, to look for different vulnerabilities or license issues. So you say, OK, well, every single one of these applications that I'm building Right? They have all these same requirements. It doesn't matter what kind of app it is or what the problem is. These are all consistent requirements. Then when we think about the sort of production side of it, if this is pre-production, you have similarly have a consistent set of things, which is great. How do I think about you know, provisioning my application? Right? I need to define what's the infrastructure it runs on, you know, how much capacity do I need, do I need to version upgrade resources, et cetera. Right? So I want a consistent way to define and manage the provisioning of them. Then the next layer up is how do I think about the security of those applications? Right? So great, how does the app get usernames and passwords for databases? How does it get certificates for you know, TLS traffic? How do I get encryption keys to secure my data? How do I do API keys for maybe cloud applications or Twilio or you know, sending email, et cetera? So you have sort of a secret management, key management, certificate management set of challenges that every app has, right? Like almost every app is going to need either a database credential or API token or something, right? Then you have a set of networking or connectivity challenges, right? So great, my application, when it gets deployed, how do I update the load balancer, the firewall, the API gateway to make sure that the application actually gets traffic? And then if application A needs to talk to application B, do I need to get you know, firewall changes automated? Or do I have something like a service mesh that's going to enable app A and app B to communicate? But again, there's some sort of a networking challenge for almost any app you're going to deploy, right? unless it you know, never talks to any other service. Then you have a runtime, which is where is the application actually running? Right? It might be on Kubernetes. It might be a Lambda function. It might be on top of Nomad. You know, it doesn't really matter. The app has to go run somewhere. And then lastly, you know, that spans all of these layers, is there's an observability challenge. right? Meaning, great, my apps are going to emit logging data, they're going to emit telemetry, they're going to emit tracing. How do I sort of observe all that to understand, hey, is the app healthy? You know, how do I debug if there's problems? So if you look at it and then say, OK, great, well, ultimately, the applications then sit and run on top of this whole stack. Right? So for almost any app, once again, they have all of these problems. Right? You know, that's a production grade app. right? Maybe you can say, I'm skipping observability, or I'm not doing CI, I'm not testing the app. You know, you could skip those things, but I think functionally any mature application is going to need all of these pieces. So then the question becomes, OK, well, what's in scope for these platform teams, right? Ultimately, our view is all of this, right? Because the goal is how do I deliver consistency to these application teams, right? I don't want app 1 through 100 to do it in a different way. And so if every app has these problems, I don't want to have 100 different CI solutions, right? And have 100 different pipelines that I have to manage. But then the second side of that is, OK, the consistency piece of it is also, how am I delivering leverage to all these groups? Right? As an app team, if I can onboard and get this whole thing delivered as a service, I can focus on what I actually care about, which is my application. Right? Like most of these app teams functionally are not here because they care about you know, the provisioning details or the runtime or the observability. Right? Like those are details to support the application as opposed to the end goal. Now that said, this is a very large scope. right? So as you think about the sequencing of the platform teams, like where do you start? Right? It's very hard to go from zero to providing all of this as a shared service. So for us, I think about it as what are the important checkpoints along the way? Right? And how do you sort of deliver value incrementally as a platform team rather than say, we're going to disappear into a cave for you know, two years to go build this? I think the first piece of it starts with the pre-production pipeline. right? Because this is the obvious start point in the life cycle of any application. I'm building a net new app. Great, it kind of needs the pre-production pipeline. So as a platform team, can I standardize and say, great, I'm going to provide you know, GitHub and Jenkins as a service, and Artifactory I run centrally to have the shared you know, artifacts. I'm delivering that as a shared service that anyone can come in and build on top of. Great. So that's at least pre-production. I think the next step of that 
and I call this the sort of L shape, is to add kind of provisioning into that, right? Because then what that brings in, if we're standardizing on something like Terraform, for example, is now I can actually build a full infrastructure as code pipeline. I can say, great, I can commit my, ver you know, my configurations to GitHub, you know, I'm validating in my CI, and then I can apply my change through Terraform Cloud, for example. And now I have that visibility as a platform team of what's all the infrastructure that's being provisioned, I can manage it in a central place, I can put the right you know, collaboration and governance protection around that. But importantly, because I'm doing it at this base level, right, I'm kind of getting the infrastructure as code done with Terraform, I can effectively support these other layers, right? Meaning I can now create a Terraform template for, let's say, my Java-based app running on Amazon ECS. So I could create a module for that, and effectively, great, that module is standardizing things like, how is that thing running? When the app gets deployed, is it connected to Datadog? So is the observability baked into that? Am I you know, connecting to Vault to do my secret management? So the advantage of this base layer of infrastructure as code is it's very flexible, right? Anything that I can express as infrastructure as code, I can begin standardizing it. I can have Terraform modules that provide a blueprint that enable my platform team to start scaling and at least having a consistent pattern. So if I say, hey, 10 different app teams are all doing a Java-based app on ECS, great. I have one module that defines how that works, and I'm defining and managing it in a consistent way. That then allows me to start marching up the stack to increasingly provide these other services as a managed service of the platform team, right? So you can imagine one world where you say, hey, every one of my app teams is running their own vault cluster, their own secret management solution. You know, that's not you know, super high leverage. Every one of these teams is managing it in a different way and dealing with upgrades and versions and you know, backups. So then as a platform team, can I offer a shared vault service as an example, right? Can I provide a shared Datadog service, right? Where I have one contract with Datadog, one account, I'm managing that, and then any one of these application teams can be sort of a user, customer of it, and then so on and so forth. Ultimately, our view is you want to march up to then this full stack being provided by the platform teams. And so if we decompose this, I almost think about it, there's almost a layer cake of platform teams. Meaning, you no, know, the base layer of my cake is I'm providing sort of an infrastructure as code baseline that I'm standardizing on and saying, great, I'm going to provide that as a shared service. As a developer team, you can come to me and provide a set of Terraform configurations and so great, now I've standardized a pipeline that is ultimately very flexible, and it supports pretty much anything that I can specify as infrastructure as code with Terraform, but now I have visibility and I can do it in a consistent way. I can get modules, I can get reusability, I have sort of that central aperture, if you will, for how I'm doing all of these things. And then over time, as I add more and more of these capabilities, what I'm really stepping up to is saying, okay, I'm at, ultimately I'm providing a platform as a service abstraction. Right? If you think about what all of these pieces amount to, it's a full-blown platform as a service. Right? Where now I'm telling my developers, great, what you're really giving me is the source code of your application. And then as a platform team, we can go, great, your source code is living in version control. We can automatically build it. We'll generate the artifact. We can deploy it onto ECS or Kubernetes. The monitoring is there. The security and networking is all built in. It's a full platform. So the advantage is as you move up to that platform layer, that's how you develop and deliver leverage to the broader organization, right? Now all of my application teams aren't sort of bogged down in the details of the infrastructure. They focus on what they actually care about, which is their application. And then to the extent that that platform layer is too limited for them, right, it's, it doesn't solve their problem, great, the escape hatches, I have a full-blown IAC pipeline that lets me manage anything in a very flexible way. So this way I get the flexibility I want, I get the leverage I want, and I have the consistency of having a platform team that's delivering it across all these application teams rather than sort of an ad hoc approach to phase one. Now the final piece of this is as we get mature at doing this, right? We now are delivering sort of a consistent platform, consistent set of pipelines across all of these application teams in cloud. Then I think we get to phase three. And I think the extension from phase two to phase three is we really look at them and say, well, what's so different about the private data center, right? Why can't I take this exact same approach, extend that and say, well, my private data center looks the same as a cloud, right? It's still API driven, it has all of these same fundamental problems. If I can just extend what I'm doing in cloud back to my data center, great. I can apply Terraform, Vault, Console, you know, I can deploy apps on top of VMware or OpenShift, right? I can extend, you know, Datadog to operate on premise or use a different solution. You know, maybe it's Prometheus, maybe it's AppDynamics, right? 
but fundamentally I can apply this exact same picture to my private data center. And so this platform team then becomes you know, a consistent way of delivering infrastructure across everything, not just cloud, but private data center and sort of multi-cloud, if you will. Right? And so this is the maturity curve we see people go through. Right? Most often people start in phase one. It's sort of this chaotic approach to cloud, very ad hoc, every team kind of doing whatever they want. Very quickly people realize that it's going to be hard to control cost, security, compliance in a sensible way. So that gets you to phase two where the platform team is there to standardize the approach and industrialize it at scale. Ultimately, their scope might start more narrowly on pre-production, grow that to something like you know, having an infrastructure as code pipeline with something like Terraform, but then ultimately get to the point where you're delivering a platform as a service capability, which is this broader picture. right? You need all of these pieces for your apps. And that then, I think, completes the sort of layer cake. right? Infrastructure as code standardization, platform standardization, and once you have that, then you can get into phase three, which is really expansion into private data center. And that gives you then kind of a consistent approach to doing all of this. Hopefully that was helpful. Uh, that just shares a little bit of kind of our view of how platform teams have evolved and the role they play as we sort of industrialize our approach to cloud.